All right, Black and White Network supporters, we're going to talk about something we covered at great length when the fallout was happening in the culture wars uh, when they decided to go after Jason Aldean. Now, earlier this year, we saw Jason Aldean release a what became a smash hit, what became his biggest hit ever, and try that in a small town. Of course, the music video came out and the world exploded. There was outrage. The woke mind virus was creeping through what's left of the brain cells of the a-holes on Twitter slash X, and they were losing their minds. All oh, the media was going after uh, Jason Aldean. They were writing hit pieces, and, uh, well, he just never backed down at all. He never came off of it. And, uh, well, Jason Aldean's come out and made some more comments. He had an interview with CBS this morning, and uh, he doubled down on what he believes is right and wrong, and he also talked to Fox News, and I thought he made some interesting comments on that. So uh, we're going to get, he. I can tell you this, he's got his belief set, he's sticking to it. He's not backing down. Him and his wife are big Trump supporters. They're friends of Trump. Um, they've been to Mar-a-Lago several times. Look, both Jason and his wife, Brittany, have been the subject of cancellation attempts multiple times over the last three or four years and because his wife's very outspoken against transgenderism and pushing that on children and all that kind of crap that uh well people like you and me if we're watching this video when you're watching this video and me making it uh we probably align quite a bit on those kind of uh topics so let's take a look at this jason aldean has an idea why try that in a small town resonated with so many fans Quote, I just think there's a lot of people out there that just want to go to work and come home, raise their kids, feel comfortable about sending their kids to school, knowing they're going to come home. Or let their kids go to a movie on a weekend and not worry about something crazy happening to them in the parking lot or inside a movie theater. How about simply driving a car down the road? You know, I do the Chicago, we got the Chicago series I do every Monday. You would be shocked and many of you that watch those videos aren't shocked how many people just catch a stray bullet while they're driving in their car literally i'm going to walmart boom stray bullet i mean you know he sat back and one of the things that this country watched the entire section of the country we sat back and watched this country get burned down you know wondering what is going on with uh the lawlessness in this country and crime and it all skyrocketed all product of radical DAs, et cetera, et cetera. He watched this same kind of thing and he knows, you know, Jason Aldean's not stupid. He knows these are democratic run cities and that was part of the point. But if you also listen to the song, you know, as somebody that lives in rural East Texas, I could completely relate to the song because yeah, Everybody helps everybody. There's a sense of, of community family among folks. Everybody's always watching each other's back. And if something goes down, the community's showing up. All right? And nobody would ever put up with what they go through and have dealt with in some of these liberal cities either. And, yeah, I could relate to that as well. The country music crooner continued. It's just like we're kind of living in the Wild West right now, and I think people are just kind of tired of it. There's just constant chaos and something going on. Somebody is always pissed off about something, and it's just one of those songs where a lot of people that could relate to that because they're just sick of it. Aldean explained that the constant, quote, chaos that he is seeing is far different from how he was raised, and it does not fly in a small town. You just happen to see it more, in my opinion, in larger towns where it's a little more lawless. And I don't know. It's just the Wild West to me. Al Dean explained that country music is for the every man and the blue collar music, which is why Try That in a Small Town was received well by the fan base. The song streams jumped 999% and debuted... At number two on the Billboard chart in July, I think there's a lot of people out there that just kind of felt the same way, and I don't know that I feel that's the reason, but I truly don't. 
I really don't know. Aldean said on his song, which he released in May, which was a success with his fans. So I'll come over here to an article, and you will rarely ever see me pull up the Daily Beast. But uh, there's some, some things he also said from this CBS Mornings interview that he just did. Two weeks ago, Aldean defended himself on the podcast Coop's Rock and Country Saturday night, accusing online critics of making the video, quote, into something it's not. They, they tried to say it was racist, racially motivated. Oh, the only people in the, in the video causing crime were blacks. That wasn't true. I mean, hell, Antifa is almost primarily radical whites. I mean, that's just a fact. The BLM, yeah, got a lot of black black members, but also got a lot of radical left-wing members, too. And in the first televised interview about the track on CBS Mornings, the Grammy-nominated singer still hasn't changed his tune. Quote, there was people of all color doing stuff in that video. Aldine said in an interview which aired Wednesday morning, that's what I don't understand. There was white people in there. There was black people. I mean, this video did not shine a light on one specific group and say, that's the problem. And everybody that saw that you saw in that video, then you weren't looking hard enough is, is all I can tell you. He would go on to make some further comments. Let's listen. And he will continue to stand by what he's already said and try that in a small town. I would do it over again every time. Minus the, the setting. Minus the setting. Knowing what I know now, obviously, you know, knowing that that was going to be a thing, you know, maybe you look at doing it somewhere else. I know what the intentions were behind the location, the video, the song, all of it. And you know, We're going to begin this. Yeah, and he I'll, just came right out and said, I stand by all of that, everything that was put in the song, what the song means, and he didn't back off of it. And we've we've seen a lot of people really turn into – cowards when they start catching some backlash we all know their pr companies start putting out statements and uh they don't understand when, once they apologize then they really come for you as well i mean once they smell blood that's why i say don't apologize don't tell them to kiss your ass if you don't like it i don't care too bad that's one of our biggest problems in society today. Everybody stays in a perpetual state of offendedness. I mean, my God, there's way more worse problems going on in this country than to worry about what somebody said about somebody. Oh, that just didn't sound right. Okay, well, that's too bad. Too bad. And uh, like I said, there was so much in that song that everybody could relate to. I never one time thought about race, and I've seen some of the TikTok videos of some of the wokes out there losing their mind over it and how they interpreted it, and I'm like, you're literally seeing and, and interpreting this in a way that I don't think anybody with any objective common sense could possibly interpret this song. You're looking to be triggered, and you want to read between lines and all this, that, and the other. You want to fabricate and create and manufacture racism because racism would be on life support if those people didn't exist. Let's be real. Tell me what you think. Black and White Network supporters, peace. I'm out. Till next time.